Hi, I'm Mark Natcan, and I'm here interviewing Jack Etkin today, which is really a turnabout, but it's a pleasure. Thanks, Ted. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Jack, let's talk about housing in Victoria. Okay. I know that's a concern of yours. Okay. Why? <laughs> um, I think Canada's housing policy is exactly what we see. Uh, homelessness, uh, very high rents, and uh, purchase prices also absolutely crazy. Huge amounts of debt, debt being created, and all based on a shortage of housing. And the, I guess the other side of the high rents and the high house prices is that all that money is flowing somewhere. And I think it's flowing to the 1% of the 1%. They've created the financiers, the, de the big developers, the land holding companies whose land values have just skyrocketed. Over the last 20 years or so, they've created quite deliberately a shortage of housing. Right? And they've done it in different ways. They've actually underbuilt. And then at the same time, they've opened our housing market up to the entire world to speculate in. And it pays people to, for example, I heard several years ago, this was I think a number from the city of Vancouver, that there were 40,000 vacant homes in the greater Vancouver area. That's astonishing. It's scandalous. I want to ask you something related to that. I remember reading uh, not too long ago that one of the leading revenue sources for the provincial government was the l revenue derived from the real estate transactions. Have you ever come across that? No, it could be. They get a lot of money it's from that. It's huge. And it's almost as though there might be a built-in incentive there to keep the housing availability at a minimum. Well, that does seem to be what is happening. So 20 or 30 years ago, the feds and the province both got out of building housing, which they used to do. They used to build thousands and thousands of units of housing every year, good quality housing, right? And so they stepped aside and they left it up to the private sector. And I'm sure the private sector very quickly said, you know, if we create a shortage of housing, it can only be good for us. That's and, kind of interesting. And the, the whole homeless disaster is because they've tightened the screw so much on supply that they've created a situation where there are thousands of people living on the streets of the country from coast to coast. So I sent an email to the city of Saanich and the city of Victoria about a week ago. And I said, you know, if you look out the front window of Saanich City Hall, you see two malls. And they cover over, I would say, over two hectares in total area. And it's all parking lot and uh, single-story retail. Why isn't that land open for housing, you know? And if you then walk from there, from Sandwich City Hall, down past Uptown Mall to Mayfair Mall, it's very wide between Douglas and Blanchard in that corridor. There's another street called Oak Street that runs between Mayfair Mall and Uptown Mall. And it's all parking lots and car dealerships and single-story retail. You could build a city in there. Those two areas, that mall, and uh, those two malls, and then the area between Uptown and, uh, and Mayfair, would have solved our entire housing crisis, except it's like nobody wants to solve it. It's deliberate. It's interesting or because so I, think. I was listening to an interview with a Finnish housing official a few weeks ago. I think it was on Michael Enright's show. And Enright posed the question, well, how did you end housing? And he said, we put people in homes. We didn't say, well, you're an alcoholic or you're a poly drug abuser. We need to take care of those problems. The big problem the homeless have is very simple. They need a place to live yeah. that is theirs. And the problem is that if we build enough homes, then house prices are going to come down, right? And that flow of money that has been going to the super rich will end. I mean, they've created a bubble of massive, massive insanity. When, it, when they blow it up, and which they could do just by raising interest rates by 2%, right? Um, who knows? I mean, it's, go it, it's going to be as big a nightmare on the way down as it was on the way up. Do you think about what the current leadership 
in, here in the uh, capital city has done to um, try to stabilize or the market by saying, talking about absentee owners, for instance. They've done nothing. I mean, it's a, it's a disaster. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Airbnb units uh, here, in, here in Victoria. It's all la housing that's being taken out from people and just turned into a little business by some entrepreneur. It, that's just one more example. I mean, the solution is that this never should have happened. I think it was done very deliberately in order to funnel money up to the top and it worked very, very well and it's still working well. And as well as the debt and so many people living in, in unstable housing and you know, because there's just not enough. How can, how can a society not have enough housing for the people who live here? It's, it's crazy, right? But yet we've done it. And while, while, while the provincial government has no money to do it, but can spend $10 billion on Site C. That's a very interesting point. Thank you, Jack. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mark. Welcome back. And this time I'm going to interview Mark, Mark uh, McCannon. So, Mark, we're going to talk about an incident that you were involved at, which happened, is it a week ago now? Uh, yes, it seems like so much has been happening that it was a long time ago, but I think it was just about a week ago. And that was the incident at uh, Premier John Horgan's home where there was a blockade or something. I mean, a citizen, yeah. Yeah, well, there were um, a number of us from Extinction Rebellion who went there with the express purpose of drawing attention to the invasion by the RCMP under the direction of this government, this putatively progressive government, pushing into those territories, those homes. So we decided we would just go to the premier's house and I and an, a woman um, locked down uh, right in front of the driveway, not on the property, and a third member of our group sat down there too and announced that he wanted to make a citizen's arrest of the premier for um, human rights violations. Now, I went to the front door before locking down and I tapped. And when I say I tapped, I want to show you how hard I tapped because I saw through a glass panel that there was somebody there. I didn't know whether they could see me or it was in silhouette, so I went like this. That's it. When I saw the woman, as it turned out, in profile get, pick up the phone, I simply went back down the driveway. We were arrested, thrown in jail, we're charged with a criminal mischief. That's fine, it's okay. And I might note that when Premier Horgan showed up, I said to him, good morning, Premier Horgan. And he said, go yourselves, okay? That was his response. And I said, well, that's an articulate response, thank you. That event made me feel uncomfortable. But on the other hand, It's, the fact is our governments are killing us and destroying our planet. And for them to do it to everybody else, but, I mean, people have been forced out of their homes at Site C because of, because of John Horgan and this government. Well, people like are living on the streets yeah. because of their housing policy. Well, I'd like to point something out. that the, it, It's like irony is stone dead at the Capitol. Alex Wilkinson of the Liberal Party immediately tweeted how horrible it was that nobody in BC should have to worry about their homes being invaded by anyone. Now, first of all, we didn't invade anybody's so home. We did it off the property. The irony, though, is that's exactly what's happening on the Wet'suwet'en territory. They're invading that home. I thought that would be apparent, but not to Wilkinson and not to a lot of other so-called political leaders who all were so appalled. This was peaceful. If they continue to do what they're doing, others are not going to be peaceful. There's going to be a lot of anger. I think they should take note of what's happening and why this invasion of Wet'suwet'en territory has triggered such a reaction. Yeah. Um, we've got a minute left. Do you want to finish off with anything about it? or? Well, I would just say that it's interesting to me that people have <coughs> been generally um, surprisingly, even to me, supportive of the action. I mean, I have certainly run into people who weren't happy with it, and that's fine. I, I get it. And I don't even begrudge Horgan coming in and 
saying something, you know, using a, 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 an expletive and telling us what we could do with ourselves. Um, because we didn't go there expecting tea and cucumber sandwiches. I mean, we went there with a, to draw attention to what is happening up in the north. And to that extent, we succeeded because it got a lot of coverage and that message got out. And I think that's what we in Extinction Rebellion are trying to do peacefully, to draw attention to that. And if we're going to be accused of terrorizing people. Our governments themselves are terrorizing people. So there are a lot of people who fear the invasion of their homes, and many of them are on Wet'suwet'en territory. Mark, thank you very much. Thank you. And folks, thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.